Hey YouTube, Homestead Prepper. And uh, what, what you're looking at here is a compound bow. And uh, all these bows, as you see up here, and that crossbow, and uh, they're Jennings brand and Bear. And uh, I don't really have any like really expensive bows, but these were all obtained at the flea market courtesy of my dad. My dad is an expert at buying things at the flea market for a deal. He, uh, he also knows how to negotiate prices really well. And uh, there's not a bow on this table that, that he paid more than $15 for. And I told him, if you see bows up there, I'll give you the money and all that. And of course, you know, he never accepts any money. Uh, but he paid, you know, $5 for some of these things. And, uh, you know, some of them work. Some of them are missing strings. And, um, like this, uh, I think this one right here, this is a, this is a Jennings. Um, I took it up to the bow shop to have a string put on it. Because I think this was the first one that he found. And they said, oh, well, we, we, we don't work on these type right here. You, you can see where the, the end is broken. And I think the guy was just shining me on because he wanted to sell me one of those, uh, you know, new $1,400 bows. Which, you know, you can spend more on a compound bow than you can on a really nice hunting rifle. But, uh, you know, you, you may not be allowed to have that nice hunting rifle in your uh, current jurisdiction, wherever you live at in the world. But uh, every prepper should have a bow. And if you can get them at the flea market and do a little work to them, <laughs> you're going to be way ahead of the game. And uh, these bows right here... Well, not these bows, but bows like them, you know, have put meat on the table for thousands and thousands of years. You know, way before firearms were ever invented, uh, the bow was the standard. And, uh, you know, it's, it can take small game, and uh, you can take large game with a bow. Um, you know, imagine taking one of these things out and getting you a big old bear with it. So, but anyway, uh, just uh, a, little bit, a little bit about these bows right here. This right here is a uh, compensator, and what that does, for those of you, I'm sure a lot of you already know this, and I'm just going over this for people who've uh, never run into this before, is that this, when you pull the bowstring back, instead of all that shock and energy going in your wrist and in your forearm, this right here, it goes into there, it helps compensate, and I guess it helps uh, for accuracy. And you'll see the uh, people who go to the bow shoots, they'll, uh, they'll use a rest, something like that, for the arrow to rest on. And uh, this will be your, uh, your sight right here. When you pull this through, you can look and you can see the uh, sights on it. And uh, let's see, we have one here. This one does not have a peep sight on it. And what it's got, just for, and I also need to put a compensator on it and everything. And uh, this is a right-hand bow, and if you look, you can see how the cutout is cut out there on the left side. And this right here is what holds the arrow in there. And those pins, you see my target, the top one, the green one, I've got it set at 20 yards. And then the red one is, like set at 30 yards. And then the bottom one is set at uh, 40 yards. So... If I see my deer or whatever I'm hunting, and it's about 20 yards, which that target is about 20 yards, and that's about, I don't know, 18 or 19 meters to uh, some of y'all, uh, I would put it right there on that pin and line it up here on the peep sight, which I haven't put in yet. But um, that's basically your sight right there. When you pull it back, you can see right through it. Um, this, this particular bow, if you're out buying them, you can see the cutout is on the right side. This is a left-handed bow. I'm actually holding this incorrectly. So if you're left-handed, this is what you're looking for right here. So make sure you get that. And if you're right-handed, which most bows are right-handed, you'll see the cutout goes to the left side. And I had a friend who, uh, who could only see out of one eye, and he was right-handed, but he had to shoot the bow left-handed so he could look through the peep side and everything. Uh, now, this is a crossbow, and uh, I don't know, <laughs> it looks a little homemade. 
uh, I, I would not trust these bolts right here. If I was, I would get some grade 8 bolts and some grade 8 nuts. and Because uh, you don't want this thing coming apart on you when you fire it. And uh, these are broadheads that came with it. But uh, I just want to share a little bit here about uh, bows. And uh, like I said, I think everybody should pick up a couple of them especially now while they're at the flea markets and they're cheap and you know if you want a uh, name brand then you know you're gonna have to pay the money but I, I've shot a few bows in my day and um, the, the name brands are nice but if you're just concerned about you know putting meat on the table one of these right here will do it and uh, most of these bows are probably in the 50 to 60 pound range and that's the amount of pull that you got to pull to uh, pull it back this right here is probably about a a 45 pound bow. I'm not sure uh, in the state of Florida here I think uh, there's a minimum I think it's 35 pounds um, that you have to have if you're gonna hunt with it but uh, I'm not sure about that and uh, the beauty of a compound bow is, is that when you pull this thing back it's called let off so you if it if this is a 60 pound bow right here it takes 60 pounds of force to pull this string back then uh, it'll have like 80 percent let off and that means that to hold the thing back you don't have to hold the whole 50 or 60 pounds you only have to hold like uh, you know 80 percent of that or 20 percent of that well, whatever the bow is rated which I'm not really sure what that is but it, it, that way you can draw down on it for quite a while and uh, let, let me show you something else here alright well this was my uh, regular hunting bow right here and what happened is that little thing right there pulled out. That's what holds the string around here. And it, it like exploded and blew up on my hand. So uh, I've got to fix that. Probably bow smithing would probably be very boring. But uh, this needs to be fixed. And um, this has, uh, I took the, the arrow rest and I put it on this one over here. And I like this type for hunting because it holds the arrow. And, um, this right here is an assist and what this does this wraps around here and you put that through the string like that wrap the string around there and you pull it just like a trigger and it lets it go now you can use fingers and let it go like that I've seen people at uh, competitions will uh, use their fingers and use recurve bows and do really good or win the win, win the match but um, another thing too is when you hold the bow it's going to be kind of hard for me to do this. When, I, when I'm holding this right here, I don't have a death grip on it. I'm, I'm just, it's just resting in my hand like that. And when I let it go, I just let it go. And if you watch the pros, get a couple tips from them and uh, your, your shooting will greatly improve and uh, well, I'll show you how this works right here now you never ever want to pull this back full draw and let it go without an arrow in it because you can uh, you can really mess up the bow you can mess up yourself um, another thing too is a nephew of mine worked uh, I guess the guy was an electrical contractor 35 years old he was out practicing his bow and right right here the bow string hit him I don't know how he was holding his arm whatever but it hit him and uh, it caused a blood clot 35 years old he died so uh, take great care when you use bows and I, I think they make protectors for that too uh, I fortunately have not had that happen to me and I hope I don't but um, I just want to go a little bit uh, over these bows and uh, you can pick them up cheap even even this thing right here you can pick this thing up uh, ready to go off of eBay for probably you know less than $75 um, the arrows these are the um, aluminum type and you can make your own and uh, if you go to a bow shop they can figure out what length you are I forgot what I am 
27 and a half, 28 and a half. I, I don't remember, but um, they need to be sized depending on how your draw is. And uh, like I said, those are aluminum shafts. Now these are carbon fiber, and these uh, fly a lot faster. You got a, a lot more feet per second, probably, I don't know, I guess around 300 feet per second. And these are either 290 or 280 feet per second. It depends on you know, depends on your bow. It depends on how much the arrows weigh. But um, I just want to go over a few things uh, about bows. And uh, if you can pick up a deal, I highly recommend it. And uh, this is the Homestead Prepper out.